Today we're going to talk about a shot that not many players talk about, not many players work on, even though it is a key shot. I'm talking about the smash. When you're at the net and the ball goes up, you know you're going to have to hit a smash. The first thing you have to do is position yourself sideways and turn your shoulders. Because the way you're going to move is always shuffling. One of the key elements to be efficient when you hit a smash is your positioning. Most of the people who don't smash well is because they position themselves wrong when it comes to hitting the ball. If you think about it, an overhead is like a serve. And positioning yourself wrong means tossing wrong. It's exactly the same phenomenon. And you know how important the toss is when it comes to serving. Now the question is, how do I position myself right when I have to hit a smash? The best way to do it is to use your left arm. Your left arm is gonna go up and in a way point at the ball. You can use your finger, you can use your hand, doesn't matter much. What is important is that you will try to have your hand and the ball be on the same line. And in order to do it, you will have to move backwards and sideways. When it comes to moving backwards, a common mistake is to move slow and have the ball further back from your hand. If it's the case, you will be unbalanced when you hit an overhead and you won't be able to transfer your body weight forward. You have to create time as much as you can so you can stop and be able to transfer the body weight forward when you hit your smash. Now let's talk about the upper part of the body. As I explained to you, a smash is very close to a serve, but it's a shorter version of the serve because you're not going to do all the movement, but you're going to start the movement from the trophy position. For those who don't know, in the trophy position, your elbow and your shoulders have to be aligned. So this is how you start. You start from that position and then you move. Once you are in the right position, when your hand and the ball are on the same line, then you accelerate your hand and you pass your back shoulder in front and finish always in front with the body weight going forward. In some extreme cases, when the lob is really good, you won't have time to move backwards enough to be able to have your body weight going through. So you'll have to adapt. In those cases, you will have to hit your smash going backwards. And that's not an easy thing to do. What is very important to succeed in hitting the smash going backwards is to keep your balance. If you hit your smash and you go back like this and you lose your balance, it's not gonna be efficient. The first thing to do is once you decide that it's the right moment to hit the ball, you will have to have a lot of pressure on your right leg. And this pressure, you're gonna use it to push on it and go up, but also to re-establish your balance and find a way when you land to be extremely balanced with your center of gravity in the middle of your hips. This is unbalanced, this is balanced. And if you look at it, you can find a way to find the balance after you hit your smash. To have a great balance, the role of the left arm is key. If the left arm is up, you are balanced. If it's down, you are unbalanced. And you need to work on that a lot. To learn to position yourself really well hitting the smash, there are simple exercises to do in which you will have to catch the ball with your left arm. Okay, here I'm perfectly positioned to hit the smash. Can you give me one more? An overhead is a shot in which you will try to hit a winner. So you have to go full. The fact that you are inside the court gives you an enormous security. It's quite easy to hit a winner overhead. Now the question is where to hit it. It's not about right or left because this is your choice and most of the players have a favorite side to go to. It's more about how deep do you have to hit. So there are two rules. If you are close enough to the net, so that's when you feel that if you hit it short, the ball will go high enough so the opponent cannot hit it, go short, always go short. If you are a bit further back and you won't be able to have the ball go higher than the player after the bounce, then you have to play deep and as deep as you can because your ball is going to be very fast, it's going to stay very low and if it has space and depth, it's almost impossible to hit back for the opponent. When you work on your smash, it's very important to work on both sides. Most of the players have a favorite side and they go there most of the time, if not all the time, so it's easy to anticipate for the opponent. So that's very important when you work on it to have the person on the other side of the court lob you 
and you have to hit smashes on the person and ask the person not to stay always in the same spot. So work on both spots. Hit on the forehand side, hit on the backhand side. Another thing that is very important and interesting to be able to see the opponent while you're smashing, which is important because when you see where the opponent is, it's quite easy to hit a winner on your smash. An exercise that I like to do is to have the, the opponent love you and then move. And you have to smash on him and you keep the ball in play as much as you can. And every time, every time he can move, right, left, center, or sometimes stay in the spot. And you have to see the opponent and always smash on him. Now there is a big question whether the player who's smashing has to let the ball fall on the ground before hitting it or hitting it in the air. So there is a, a rule quite simple. The higher the ball goes, the more chances you have to let the ball bounce. The higher the ball goes, the more you have to let the ball bounce because it's extremely difficult to hit a ball in the air when it's coming from very high because the ball comes back very fast. So the timing is more difficult to get. Second thing, it will depend on the trajectory of the opponent's ball. For example, if the opponent hits with topspin, you can't let the ball fall because the ball will accelerate and go away from you, so you have to hit it in the air. No discussion. But now you have to look at the trajectory of the ball. If the trajectory goes quite vertical, much more than horizontal, the ball will not go far from the bounce. So you can stand in front of the bounce and then smash it. Now, if the ball goes more horizontal than vertical, the ball will go away after the bounce so it's extremely difficult to hit it after the bounce and then this one you have to hit in the air. When you decide to smash after the bounce, the idea is to have a perception of where the ball is going to bounce. Let's say it's going to bounce around here and move away from the bounce. I would say two big steps so that when the ball bounces, you can still make one little step forward and then smash. Why? Because this little step forward will help you position yourself well and because it will also help you have your body weight go fully through the ball, which will give you both power and precision. When you hit after the bounce, don't try to hit the ball on its way up. This is gonna be very difficult in terms of timing. Let the ball bounce, reach its highest point, and when it's on its way down, this is the moment that you move forward and hit the ball. Now let's talk about something fun to do. It's called the jumping smash, and there are two players, I mean, many more than that, but two who are great specialist or were great specialist of that. Pete Sampras, that's why I'm saying were, uh, who was probably the master of it. Uh, his famous one is to do serve and volley, the ball goes up and then he runs, jumps and hits it. It's kind of a dunk in NBA. It's, it's almost the same motion and I'm gonna explain how you do it and the, the other one who does it super well is Gael Monfils, he loves it. So, not, where, not sure whether to be offended or... Uh... Oh, yes, in which situations do you hit the jumping smash? You have to be moving forward. So all of the players who do the jumping smash are players who do serve and volley. But in some cases, you'll have the opportunity to hit it in other conditions. Let's say you're approaching the net, you hit the ball and the answer goes high and you are in the process of moving forward. In this case, you don't stop, you don't split step. You just run to the ball straight away. You're using your front leg to jump and while you are up, you hit that overhead in exactly the same conditions as the regular overhead. The smash is definitely a motion you have to work on. It's not because you know how to serve that you will know how to hit a good smash. Actually, even professional players, some of them are really, really bad at it. And surprisingly, Novak Djokovic is known for not being a great player when it comes to smashing the ball. I mean, he does almost everything perfect, but this is one of the things he's not great at. And in some matches, it's even surprising that he can miss or be weak in some situations when it comes to smashing the ball. He had a lot of troubles in the final round Garros this year, hitting some smashes, especially in the first set, missed a lot, missed like a player who's at a very low level, so that was very surprising. Uh, I've watched also recently the match between Kokinakis and Andy Murray at the Australian Open. And uh, one of the key of this match, one of the reasons why Murray won it is because uh, Kokinakis missed or was unable to finish many smashes in the third set. And that cost him the match, basically. So what are the two reasons why even professional tennis players and even top professional tennis players are not good at hitting smashes? There are two main reasons. The first one is their positioning. And if you look at Novak, in a lot of situations, he's not positioned well. So he's not in a position where he's comfortable to hit the smash fully. So he's just pushing the ball. So that's the main reason 
why players are not good at smashing. So that's why I explain also that working on your movement on the smash is so important. And the interesting thing is when players know that they're not great at smashing, it affects even more their movement because they're kind of frozen when the ball goes up. And you can, can see it from the start. When you see the opponent hitting a lob and the player being a bit frozen, you know straight away that there are a good chance that the smash is gonna be missed. The second reason why some professional players, even top ones, are not good at smashing is because they don't trust it. So when they start to hit the ball, they are decelerating the hand instead of accelerating the hand and it affects a lot their timing. So they're not hitting the ball in the right spot and the ball escapes from them. In some cases, the lob of the opponent is extremely good. What is a good lob? Is a deep lob high and deep. Why is good? Because as, as a guy who's going to smash the ball, you have to move far and you have to be behind the baseline. And of course, it's more difficult to hit a smash winner from behind the baseline than inside the courts. Now we're almost in a position of serving. And the feeling of the player is if I go full on that, I'm almost hitting a first serve with a good chance to miss it. So it creates hesitation and hesitation in tennis brings mistakes. So first of all, when you are behind the baseline to hit a smash, don't consider that it's a first serve, because it's not. When you hit a first serve, it has to land in the service box. It's much more difficult than to be able to hit all over the court. And if you decide to smash deeper, you can smash much higher over the net. And that's actually the best way to hit deep. When you take more margin over the net, your chances of success are quite high. So I would advise you to choose, pick your side, and take a good margin over the net when you are behind the baseline to hit a smash. Another good thing to do if you feel unconfident to hit a smash behind the baseline is to hit a slice. Why a slice? Because when you hit a slice from there and you hit it deep, it's difficult for the opponent to hit a good shot because the ball is turning a lot. And actually a lot of players do that, even the pros, they decide to play even in the center of the court, but deep and with a lot of slice. The opponent will hit a, a ball back but you'll be in a good position to attack again. Last advice, don't miss your smash. It's not a good advice because then you'll be tempted to, to slow down your, your hand, but don't miss it because when you start missing a smash, you might be missing several and you're gonna hesitate to go forward and it's gonna affect your results. So that's a key to work on your smash so that you feel very confident that you can hit full without missing. There is nothing worse than missing smashes and then be shy to move forward. It's gonna affect your whole game. You can't afford to miss smashes. This shot in your game has to be at the top. Spend enough time working on your smash. I give you some exercise to do in your game. This shot is much more important than you can imagine. So spend time on it. If you like this video, check out my other masterclass. Tell me what you would like to see in the next ones and subscribe to my YouTube channel.